Hey guys, Tom here. Uh, as you can hear and see, uh, spring has arrived, so it's time to dewinterize the RV. So I wanted to go through my process of how we dewinterize the RV, and uh, you know, hopefully you guys find this information helpful. And uh, so let's get into it. All right. So one of the first things I'll do is I'll walk out to the water heater door this up and you'll see I've got I left my anode rod open and that's because I bypassed the I drained and bypassed the water heater over the winter so all I'll do is inspect this make sure it's still good mine always typically go here first uh, as far as all the you know uh, sacrificial rod and that'll basically be down to almost like nothing and that tells me that it's time to replace it this one looks fine a little build up but uh you know overall not not too bad it's kind of a pain because it's so long um oop, there we go sometimes you gotta like prop it up at different angles and things to get it to to go in like yeah right there like i'm starting to cross thread so i gotta start all over it's because it kind of like tries to like fall in on itself let's see if we can get this in there. I can't tell if that's in there level or not. Let me uh, let me grab my tool and see if it'll uh, snug in a little further. So I actually leave this right in the RV front storage compartment all the time. So it is a 27 millimeter, um, you know, socket wrench basically. Let me swap hands here. Let's see if this will uh, go in. Sometimes it just gets a little snug because of the Teflon tape. And then sometimes I'm actually cross-threading, which you don't want to destroy this. It just doesn't feel... It's going. I just don't want to ruin it. Let me, uh, let me try this again, reseat it. All right, so I, hopefully I got it in. I got a, just grabbed a bottle of CLR just a pipe cleaner and just kind of like you know cleaned up those threads looks like there's a bunch of hard water built up on the threads so um we'll just check for leaks you know once we get this uh you know filled up and hopefully it's okay uh, but yeah so you know really just there's not much to do with the water heater um if you uh filled it with antifreeze which i did the first year i'd ever done this and then i realized that was kind of a waste of antifreeze um you would have drained this and then put the uh, you know anode rod in and then uh, really that's it uh, for the water heater So the next thing I like to do is since I'm outside the RV is if you disconnect the battery or bring it into the garage Like I do and keep it on a trickle charger all winter uh, Bring your battery back out and get it all hooked up Be careful of the colors of the cabling um, You know make sure that um, If I can reach it Many times um, you know, just like in the AC world, black is hot and uh, white is uh, neutral. So on, even though it's DC, just usually black is, is going to be your hot uh, and then white will be your, your, or your plus and then white will be your negative. So uh, disconnect it just like that. So what I'll do next is uh, actually fill up the potable water tank and um, that I'm gonna actually, I'm probably gonna fill it like halfway and then I'm gonna put some bleach in uh, and then I'm gonna fill it the rest of the way so it kind of all gets mixed up together. And uh, then we'll uh, let that sit overnight to sanitize the tanks and then I'll drain it in the morning and then I will uh, flush that all out again, uh, you know, with a full tank of water just to make sure I get all that bleach out. And I'll run that on through all the faucets and everything and make sure everything gets cleaned out and you don't smell any uh, you know bleach coming out of the faucets or anything like that So the ratio that you'll want to use is uh, For every 16 gallons of tank size you want to have um, a quarter cup of bleach uh, So what we'll do is I already filled up the tank halfway uh, Or at least you know part of the way and then what I'll do is I'm gonna add so my tank is 91 gallons So that gives us about if you do the math, it's about uh, you know, 1.4 cups. So um, usually go, you know, just if, if you're gonna round, um, you know, up or down, I usually round down a tiny bit. Um, so let me, actually, I'm gonna pour this into a measuring cup first, just so I've got the right amount. Uh, so, so. It's 
little over one and a third, because that'd be, you know, 1.3333. And then just use a funnel. If you have like one of those flexible neck ones, those work a little better. But if you're careful with a fixed one, this will work just fine. Just obviously don't get it all over your clothes or anything. Great, so now I will fill the tank up the rest of the way and then let that sit. So once you've got your kind of diluted bleach in your freshwater tank, the next step is to run that um, you know, sanitizer solution basically is what it is um, through the all your faucets and things like that in the RV. So what we'll do is we'll uh, make sure all your faucets are off and everything and all your drains are closed. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll flip on our water pump and you'll hear that run. And then it should shut off. Which I think it did. Uh, and then we're going to go over to our faucets. And we're going to run them until this turns white. And then basically what we're looking for is the, uh, we're looking for that kind of bleachy smell to come out of the faucet. So that way you know that the bleach is all the way through, all the way to the end of each faucet. So the reason it was taking so long was uh, I still had my water pump in bypass mode. So I've got a three-way outlet on mine, where um, which I guess I can just show you. So down in this rat's nest, there is a this tube right here, which is where I suck in the uh, antifreeze in the winter. Back there, if you can see it, that white little valve, I had still had it in the bypass mode, so it would have uh, been trying to suck out of here, so that's what it took so long. So make sure you double check the, uh, um, you know, that, that that switch is in the right position so that it's drawing from the fresh water tank. So now if we flip on our water, yeah, now we've got good flow. Like I said, you're just looking for that that kind of bleachy smell. Okay. And then basically just repeat the process for your bathroom sink and your uh, bathroom shower. And then um, if you've got an external hose, you know, run it through that. Um, optionally, you can do the toilet as well. Um, I do just, you know, not that you're going to be drinking out of it, but, uh, you know, just, uh, just to, you know, get, get that, that bleach mixture all throughout all the lines. So while we're in here, the other thing that you may want to do, if you, um, want to sanitize the hot water, uh, you know, the, the water heater as well is, um, make sure it's off, uh, cause you don't want to heat up this, you know, there's a mix of, you know, antifreeze in there and there's bleach. So don't, don't have that on. Make sure propane's off, make sure electric is off. But then what you'll do is, uh, cause you most likely had this, uh, bypassed in the winter with, uh, you know, that anode rod out, like, like I showed you earlier. Um, just turn this and that'll fill up the, uh, the water heater with, uh, that, that sanitizing solution and then just uh, run the hot water until you've got, uh, you know, no air bubbles coming out. So I just ran into an interesting problem while I was doing exactly what I just said. Um, I have no pressure on the kitchen faucet anymore. That's all I get. So I think I may have a clog in this sink. Because if I go to the bathroom, let me show you how much pressure I have there. This is the bathroom sink. That's what I would, would expect. So we definitely have a kitchen sink problem now. So what I did to get the... Uh, um, I figured it was... It, it could be down here. Sometimes the faucet itself gets clogged. But typically it's going to be up here where there's like kind of that aerator mesh screen. Um, these are going to be really tight if you've never taken them apart before. So what I did was I took a towel and just wrapped it around the end and then a pair of channel locks 
because otherwise if you just do the channel locks you're going to scratch the heck out of it and dent it uh, so the towel just kind of you know helps protect the the actual material so now that i've got it loosened up let's uh let's take a look to see what the inside of this looks like pretty sure i had some flow in the beginning of doing this oh yeah look at that that's all that's all sediment there's actually some plastic in there which is interesting um you know it looks like little filings from a drill but uh, this is all from the water heater, I bet, because I think I had flow uh, in the beginning that uh, once I turned the hot water heater on, uh, or water heater on, the uh, the sediment basically started all coming out of the tank and, and building up. So let's just run this now and see if that makes it better. Oh, yeah. Yep. So that's an easy problem to fix. Just make sure this is all cleaned up. We'll rinse this out. good and then check the inside make sure you don't need to run this through any CLR or anything but actually there's no buildup or anything so it looks good and what we'll do is we'll throw this o-ring back in there tighten that back up probably it's not all the way tight so I'll just use the channel locks again just to get it a little more snugged There we go, that looks pretty good. And let's see if that fixed our problem. Yep, awesome. So, and this is very common in the spring. Um, if you guys follow Keep Your Daydream on YouTube, uh, they actually just ran into the exact same problem a couple weeks ago on their video. So um, it's kind of just, just funnily enough, I watched that video and uh, you know, it, the easiest thing if you have pressure issues is go somewhere else in the RV, figure out if it's just located on the one faucet or if it's like a system-wide issue. Because if it's the entire camper, then you've got something back at the pump or, you know, something in the lines that are clogged feeding the whole camper. Uh, so, so yeah, hopefully that, that helps you guys if, uh, if you run into that. I mean, periodically, I'd say even once a year, maybe take these all off anyways, off all the sinks and, um, you know, check, check them to make sure they're not getting clogged up and that it's not a problem. So one of the other things I do while I'm dewinterizing the camper is I will go over and flip one of my propane tanks on because I always only keep one on. I always have a one, you know, my backup is always full, almost like a reserve tank on like a motorcycle or a four wheeler. Um, so what I'll do is I'll flip one of these on and then I want to make sure that the stove works, the fridge works on propane and then I want to make sure the furnace works. So those will be my next steps. So for the stove, just going to flip up the glass top here, turn the gas on. Kind of let it work its way through the system. So now we blow out the system. We know that all looks good. Um, honestly, we rarely use the oven. I'll just test that when we're camping. Um, not a big deal if that fails because we've got the air fryer uh, and then the outdoor grill. So, so that's good. So next thing I'm going to do is um, uh, turn on the fridge and make sure that works. So I know a lot of people have uh, DC, you know, 12 volt DC fridges now. Uh, ours still has the propane, which for a lot of the off-grid camping we do, um, it actually works out really well. I, I, I like having the, the propane as the backup. Um, so all I'll do is uh, take these tabs out. These just keep the fridge doors propped open during the winter or when you're not using them, I guess. Um, and then shut the doors. Uh, make sure this is in auto mode. So when it's pressed, it's auto. When it's out, it's gas. Um, oh, actually, yeah, I want to actually just do gas mode. So we'll leave it uh, pressed out and then we'll just turn it on. And then uh, no check light. So that, that went off. So I can hear a little click. So that looks like it's working. And then I'll just let this sit for you know a couple hours and come back and make sure the fridge is nice and cold.
Okay, if you if I don't know if you guys can hear it, I can hear it trying to click. And if it fails, the check light will come back on. Okay, I don't hear any clicking anymore, so I think we should be good. Like I said, I'll just let this sit and make sure it cools off. So the last thing is just make sure the thermostat kicks everything on. So we'll go to heat, set it to, yeah, like, I don't know, 60 or something. It's like 55 in here right now. Just make sure it kicks on. I can hear the blower. I can hear it clicking. And I'm just, I'm, you can't see it off camera, but I've just got my hand over a, uh, a heat vent right now. I just wanna make sure it turns from cold air coming out to warm air. It's already starting to get warm. So yeah, I'll let this run, uh, especially because it's fairly cool out today. So I'll, uh, I'll just let it, you know, heat up the camper to, I don't know, let's say 65, just so it's a little more comfortable in here. And then um, we'll just make sure it, you know, stays on and runs okay and there was no problems over the winter. And then, uh, um, you know, we'll start checking some other things. All right, so now that uh, I've let the bleach solution, sanitiz sanitization solution uh, settle for, uh, you know, sit for at least 12 hours, it's actually the next next morning now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain the, uh, the whole system because uh, right now that tank is relatively full. Uh, we did run some of it through all the lines, uh, but we're gonna drain it. And on my RV, if we go under the slide here, um, sorry about the view here. Just crawl under, and we're just going to open this up. So this is our technically our low point drain. Um, honestly, it's not really the lowest because I know that there's still going to be water in here. Because uh, I'll drain it all the way, and then I'll start driving away, and then all of a sudden more water starts coming out. But it is what it is. Um, and then after that's done, what we're going to do is. Uh, we're gonna fill this uh, reservoir back up because we wanna flush out any of that bleach that's still in the lines. And um, then we'll uh, uh, run that until it, you know, we're confident that it's clean and all that. But uh, yeah, so we'll just wait for this to drain and then I'll come back at you. All right, so as you can see, we are just dripping a little bit. So she's pretty much empty. What I'm going to do now is uh, close this uh, low point drain and then uh, fill her back up. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, you know, just to summarize the process that I usually go through is I walk around the outside of the camper, just kind of inspect everything, uh, close all the valves, you know, your low, low point drains, uh, hook your battery back up, put your sacrificial rod back in your water tank. Um, and then the next step is to uh, you know, fill your, your fresh water tank with uh, water, mixing in, uh, you know, a little bit of bleach to, to sanitize everything. And it's, uh, again, it's quarter cup per 16 gallons. So for mine, I've got a 91 gallon tank. So it was, you know, a little under one and a half cups of bleach. So it doesn't take much. Um, let that sit for at least 12 hours. I usually just let it sit overnight. And then, uh, drain the whole system back out, run that through, uh, you know, the system, uh, you know, all, all your faucets and everything. Uh, and, and you would have done that when, when you let it sit overnight and then, um, you know, fill it back up with clean water, flush everything back out that way. So that, that way everything's all cleaned out and you're not drinking, you know, it's very diluted, but you don't want to put, you know, start drinking bleach water. Um, and then, you know, while it's sitting, that's the time I use to go through and, uh, you know, I'll wash the exterior of the camper, I'll wash the roof, um, I'll wash the awning, and then I'll come inside and I'll make sure everything works. I make sure the fridge works, I make sure the microwave works, the stove, the furnace, the air conditioner. Uh, basically, you know, every spring I go through, you know, that checklist that the dealer goes through, um, I think it's a PDI, a pre-delivery inspection. Uh, that, that's basically what I go through, you know, on my own every single spring just to make sure everything works. Um, and you know take it from me uh don't don't hook your battery up backwards accidentally 
um, because you you may fry some fuses. <laughs> um, so don't you know learn learn from my mistakes. Uh, but yeah, that that's all I had for today. So if you uh, thought this was helpful, uh, please like the video. Um, again, this is just my process, so yours might be different. But if you have anything to add, you know things maybe I did wrong, or or maybe things that would other people would find helpful, uh, please leave that down in the comment section below. And uh, otherwise, uh, subscribe to the channel and have a good one.